Well, welcome everybody. My name is Matt McAndrew. I'm in product marketing for HP's commercial notebooks out of the Houston area. And I'm not sure exactly how your agenda read. I may have mentioned something about a teardown. Uh, but what we're going to do is kind of something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to show you an elite book, um, and then we're going to show you some of the components that make it up uh, from a reliability standpoint. Um, uh, again, we're trying to show some of the features, some of the aspects that we put in there to make this more reliable, more durable. Uh, again, so an end user uh, can have a unit that lasts longer, that looks newer longer. Again, that gives them just a better user experience for the whole thing. So you're probably relatively familiar with our product line. Here's one of our elite books that we announced uh, second half of last year. Uh, we revamped our product line at about that time. Uh, again, coming out the elite book uh, for our P&W series. And we really tried to add a lot of features in there. Uh, and I'll focus on the, again, the reliability and durability side of it. Uh, and there'll be additional ones that I may not touch on, but that's what I want to, again, focus on for this time period. So. Here's what we have today for 2530. So what I want to do is go through about five or six areas and, and keep it relatively informal, um, but go through those five or six areas and show you, hey, here's what we did uh, to beef up the displays, to beef up um, the, the chassis itself, to beef up the batteries, and just things like that, things that we did, uh, again, to make it more durable. Um, and then quote you some of the numbers, some of the specs, you know, to show some of the data points of, of what we've done. Uh, feel free to ask any questions during it. Uh, I'm also going to pass around some of the items as we go through it, uh, and then at the end you can come back up and take another look if you want. Uh, the only thing that I ask is the two that I start with I'll need back for the very end for the last piece, uh, so Mike might be helping me there get them back because uh, that will be the last little demo that we have. Uh, but again, I just encourage you to provide any comments, feedback, questions as we go because uh, we have plenty of time. Uh, I think you know, we've got plenty of time for the next one, so again, feel, please feel free to interrupt whenever you want. Uh, so I want to start with the display enclosures. So this is the display enclosure from our 07 models. Again, a very robust design. Uh, you can see me just trying to twist it here a little bit. Um, you can see some of the marks on here, and I'll talk about these later because that's the last part of the demo. I'm not sure if you can see them, uh, but there's some additional marks on there. But you can see I'm just twisting it, putting some force on it, and, and showing how much I can twist it at this point. So again, a very strong and rugged design, but we want to take it to the next level for our 08 Elite books. So what we did, uh, and here is the display enclosure for an 08 Elite book. Uh, you can tell just at first glance, from the outside, it looks very different. Uh, we've gone with the anodized aluminum on the outside here. And then on the inside, um, you can see the honeycomb structure. Uh, that's magnesium. Um, we've done that because we wanted to get the increased rigidity. I'm putting about the same force that I was doing the last one, and you can see that it's bending much less. When I pass around, That'll be the truer test as you can do it yourself uh, just to see how much more stiff this is. And to quote you some of the numbers that we've tested and actually documented, um, as far as the force to deflect pushing in, it takes about 50% more force to deflect it and about 80% more force to twist. So again, it gives you a much more rigid display enclosure, which translates, we hope, into a better user experience, a more reliable, a more durable notebook. Um, one of the other things to, to comment on, you know, why the honeycomb? So we knew we wanted to do the magnesium inside. We did some different tests on what was going to work, and it's actually ended up being aircraft inspired. So if you've ever seen the inside of, of an airliner when they're constructing it, you'll see a similar honeycomb structure with their material. So it's really a trade-off that the engineers tried to do as far as, well, how much do you want to put in? What's going to provide the best rigidity? Uh, again, what's going to be the most efficient use of the dollars that we spend because we, we want to make it as rigid as possible, but we still want to keep it as light as possible. So again, we test it with solid, we test it with different levels of honeycomb, and this is what we came out with. Again, to give it um, a very rigid structure, and, and I'll pass this around as we go. Now, the other thing that we did that we don't really have a good way to show it in this demo, but I'll talk to it, um, is the actual latching system. We changed the, the latching system for our Elite Books for 08, and it's a four-point locking system. So you have metal posts, two metal posts that come down from the display enclosure, and then you have metal hooks that catch it. Again, it's much more rigid uh, than our previous models, which were still very good, uh, but what this helps protect you from is side impact. So if it's, in, if it's in your backpack, or it's in your carrying case, or it's up above a seat in an airplane, and it's getting jostled around, it protects you much more with the side impact than our previous generations did. Again, we just want to keep looking for the areas that we can address 
to beef it up from a reliability standpoint, um, again, but still making it cost effective as we go. So I'm going to pass this around. Um, again, we'll, at the end, we'll, we'll get back to this. And if you have any other questions at the end of this, uh, we'll cover those then. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the chassis. Um, this is the chassis of one of our lead books from our 08 series. Um, again, we, we made the, the move to magnesium in this case. We went from plastic to magnesium. Again, the drive to magnesium was, again, to get the increased rigidity. We want to protect all the components in here. Uh, we want to make sure um, that we you know, make it as rigid as possible. We, what that does is it protects everything from the system board to the optical drive to the hard drive to any other key components that we have in here. Um, you know, most notebook vendors are still using ABS plastic. We've m made the move um, to magnesium for the Elite Books, and again, we're seeing pretty good results so far. One of the other things that we've done on here is we've increased the support around the corners. Again, because when this does get jostled, when it does get dropped, when it does get bumped, these, you know, the corners are what takes a lot of the impact. Sometimes it may be directly on the side, but more likely than not, it's going to be on the corners. So we've reinforced those even more than before, uh, still being very weight conscious, again, to, to provide that extra durability uh, for the Elite Book series. Um, are there any compromises in moving to the magnesium chassis? Like, is there, does it disperse heat less efficiently or is it heavier? Like, is there any compromise other than maybe X cost? I mean that's that's the biggest one that we have to we have to follow. Or they have to track. Um, now, from a weight perspective, we're actually seeing some you know pretty good um, uh, results as far as with the, keeping the weight at we, what we were from the previous generations, if not below. Uh, and but and that kind of gets back to the display enclosure. We didn't want to go to the full you know sheet of magnesium. While it may have been slightly more rigid, it would have added weight that we didn't need. Right. So again, we made kind of that uh, that balancing act of. How much do we want to add to increase rigidity, but we don't want to increase the cost too much or increase the weight. So it is somewhat of a balancing act. What about RF? Is there any difference in RF shielding as well? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I would need to check into that, but not that I'm aware of. So one of the other things that we've done is we've uh, improved the paint process on the bottom of this. It's an industrial paint process. Uh, that's similar to industrial equipment or outdoor uh, metal applications. Again, just trying to, to make it so it lasts as long as possible and looks new as long as possible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep this one up here because I'm going to jump to this one pretty soon because uh, it's going to tie into another section. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the HP 3D Drive Guard. Uh, you're probably pretty familiar with that. Uh, it's one of those things that we've had for a couple years, but we've rolled out across a broader section of our product line. And what that is intended to do is to protect your data uh, on your hard drive in case uh, the notebook gets knocked off a table, gets dropped. And, and basically what it does is it parks the hard drive um, if it falls off. So it, it recognizes uh, that it's taken a change, you know, it's a swift movement and it parks the hard drives and, and helps minimize the damage if it does fall, if it does drop. Uh, we, in fact, we've seen some pretty good results with that as far as our returns. Because it's one of the things we can track, you know, reasons for the why a unit is returned. Is it a drive failure? Is it, you know, such an, you know, is it um, a display or, or whatever the case may be? And our drive failures have really gone down as we've in, uh, rolled out this technology across our products. Because again, when it parks the hard drive, it really minimizes the chances of damage occurring uh, with that accident. Um, and one of the things that you can note when, if you have an Elite Book at home, uh, the drive light will turn amber when that happens. And you can almost do a little self-test. So if you have a unit, you obviously don't want to drop it to test it. But if you have it in your hands, you just make a quick movement, you know, 12 to 15 inches down, you'll see the amber light kick on. That's a sign that it's part of the hard drive and that your 3D accelerometer is working. So again, it's just one of the, the features that we built in across our Elite Books. Uh, to provide additional reliability. Any questions on on that part? How far does it need to go? All 12 to 15 inches to get it kicked in? I think it's actually slightly less than that. Um, the reason I'm asking, I, I had a life accident, slamming the tank onto the table, 
and crash into the rock. White back, a white back. <laughs> well, we have pretty extensive test suites, um, but I'm not sure we cover that that specific one. Um, but now it's a good question though, as far as how long the actual distance is. I mean, can can you test? It? I mean, can you adjust the sensitivity to the software? Actually, I don't believe that you can. I would need to double check on that, but we have it set in the factory uh, to a certain level of what we think the, the majority of folks would want it set at. So that's what the, you know, kind of the approach that we take for that. So no, we, ha we haven't done that, but we've, we've had some, some of you guys have asked if we don't so put up the SDK yes. to that because with an accelerometer, there's a right. lot of applications do, like, that, screen. that you could do with it. And I think it's one of the things we're looking at doing yeah. because you know, like obviously it's an accelerometer, there's a lot of things that you, know, you could do, you create yourself. So. Yeah, and that's good feedback. Um, you know, if, if you had it too sensitive, which we don't think we do, then I mean, you could be on a train or in a car, and it could be parking too much, and then it could, you could have issues there. That's the opposite of where it's it's slowing down your system. Um, you know, we think we're trying to kind of target an approach that's uh, going to hit you know the vast majority of our customers, and they're going to uh, uh, a value that they're going to want in that. Um, so I wanted to go on to the HP Dura Finish. So I don't know if you. Um, if you took a look when we passed this around for the, the L7 model, you may have noticed the scratches on it. Um, this is from previous tests, because we've done this, this demo at, at quite a few places. Um, and the L8 model did not have those same scratches. Um, so with the dirt finish, we've tried to make it you know, just as scratch resistant uh, as possible. Um, and it's something that we've been actually been able to measure. Um, Again, with the PNW series, we have the Dura finish, and it's actually up to six times more scratch resistant than our 07 models. Uh, we have the data to, to back that up. And while we don't have Dura finish on our B series, we still make improvements, and that jumped 3x from what we had in previous years in our B series. And in fact, it kind of gets a little confusing, but with that 3x improvement, it's actually above what the P series was the year before, um, if that makes sense. So. Um, the real kind of guts of this test is with the steel wool. So this is just a traditional steel wool that you're used to. Um, I can pick a spot, you know, just normal force, and I can see a scratch. And you can try this afterwards also. And you know, this is something that you wouldn't obviously do normally, but just to show the effect here, uh, again, you, you see the marks on it. Now with the Dura finish on the 08 model, the anodized aluminum here. It just slides on it. You don't see any scratches. And again, this is just me doing it, but afterwards, you know, if you want to come up and take a look at it and do it yourself, it's something I would encourage. And the stir finish is not just on a display enclosure. It's on the keyboard deck and it's on the touchpad. It's something that we roll out across the, the whole part of the product there. So we know that there's multiple areas that uh, can get scratched up as they go. No, it's not on the bottom. We have the improved painting process that, that I mentioned earlier, um, but it's not the actual dirt finish. Because the most parts that will get a scratch on a laptop are the two outside panels. When it's coming in and out of, for example, bag or something else. Right. Or you, you use it on a desk and you know you move it or whatever, what, what not. Yeah, no, and then that's a good point, and that's why we've addressed this area because it's it's the most visible to anybody. Um, whether it's to you taking it out of your bag, whether it's to somebody else when you have it open, it's easily the most visible. Uh, so that's the area that we focused on, but we still have the improved paint process on the chassis itself um, to help with that. Uh, but the dirt finish is on the display and the touchpad, and then on the keyboard or on the palm rest area itself. So, so more than the enterprise, it looks like you have more of a straight finish on the corner, but the consumer line has more rounded corners. Correct. So why is that? It's in the ground corner would make a, a better. I mean, as far as aesthetically or as far as from reliability? Well, we've actually seen, I mean, pretty good results with this. And I'll kind of, when I wrap up, I'll talk about some of the testing that we've done on it. Um, you know, they're both very strong designs, how the consumer's done it and how we've design, done it on the commercial side. Um, but the way they distribute the force on drops, on different things, uh, we've seen pretty good test results on this. Um, and again, it's different materials that the consumer would use versus us. So, you know, we have areas that we have a little more flexibility and vice versa with them. So it's just kind of different approaches, not necessarily better one way or the other, but just different uh, based on the materials, based on the, you know, uh, target folks who are going to be using them. Okay, I want to go on to the Dura keys. And uh, 
the Dura Keys is kind of the same idea with the Dura Finish. You know, a lot of people have keyboards that, you know, they don't trade in their notebooks very often. So over the years, they're pounding on the keys and they just, the keys may not fall off, but the letters wear off. In fact, um, true story, I'm walking over here and I, I didn't see her name on her name tag, but the lady who's manning the door downstairs sees me carrying all these individual pieces up. And she makes, you know, a comment about it and she sees the keyboard. And then she says, you know, I really wish they'd sell the keys by themselves. And I'm so like, you know, I ask her, well, why is that? She goes, well, I really like my notebook. It still works well, but all my letters are worn off. And uh, I didn't prompt her, but I thought, well, that's a good story to tell when I get up here. So, <laughs> so it definitely fits in. Um, and that's what we try to do because, especially with commercial notebooks, just the amount that they're used versus a consumer notebook, it really is key that we provide the durability here. And not that it necessarily impacts the functionality um, because the keyboard will still work, but again, you don't want to have a keyboard that's a year or two old and you start seeing the wear from the, the letters that are getting hit the most. It's just, again, a user experience that we want to improve. Now, you know, it, it's easy for me to say that it's better, um, but some of the numbers that back it up, we've done some testing on it, and it actually is 50 times more resistant to wear than keyboards without the Dura Finish, without the Dura Keys. So it's really a big jump up for us. Uh, and again, this is across our P&W series. Then the other thing that we've done with the keyboard itself is, it's kind of hard to see from a distance, and it may not show up on your cameras, uh, but I'll pass it around, is the Mylar film on the back. Um, and really, what we want to do there is make it as spill resistant as possible. Any notebook, short of a fully rugged notebook, um, there's a certain amount of liquid they're going to have an issue with, but we want to make it as spill resistant as possible. So with the Mylar film, it just helps push uh, any liquid away from the key components that are underneath the keyboard. Again, just trying to... Yes? Now, do you push the liquid away until the back holes are drained down the bottom? We, we do not have drain holes on them. It's something that we're looking at. Um, and we know that we've seen it in some other uh, notebooks, um, but it's something we're definitely looking at. Um, I have a battery question that it's not exactly on topic with this, but it's close. Um, about four years ago, I got very spoiled. I, I used a, a Fujitsu P5000 series, a little 10.6 inch okay. unit, and it had a removable uh, DVD drive bay that I could put a secondary battery in. Right. So four, almost five years ago, I was rocking 11 hours of battery life. And to go back to anything else has just been, you know, depressing. Um, but I noticed that even on the laptops that you guys have, um, that have removable drive bays, you have like a weight saver, mm -hmm. I don't think any of them have a secondary battery. And I know some of your corporate ones, you have like a slate battery, but there's not, that technology doesn't trickle down to the consumer battery. So are there some limitations? Is, is it strictly about cost that we don't see more laptops, you know, with like a secondary battery? You know? mean in place of an optical well, drive? Yeah, in place of the optical drive, you know, so you pop it's, out the optical drive. And it's, it's really just it a trade-off. Um, do we want to do that? Do we want to have a, a secondary battery that snaps onto the back or a slice battery for a 2710? Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've chosen to go that route and not that it can't be done in the future, but it's just the route that we've chosen, whether it's from a cost perspective, whether it's from uh, kind of what we've targeted that most of our, our customers are going to want, but um, if you're seeing differently, you know, that's, that's feedback that, that I can take back. Um, but it, it really was a conscious decision that, hey, we want to give the best battery life we can, and in a 6910 or 6930, it's going to be the travel or the extended battery that snaps onto the back or the slice battery uh, for the tablet. So it's just, it was a conscious decision on our part to, to yeah. go that route. You know, I, I would love to see more of the slice battery options to be available in your consumer models yeah. because I prefer the styling of a lot of the consumer models and it's just some of the features, right. but the slates seem to be exclusively on the business side and I think there are consumers that would yeah. love to have you know, 10 hours and, of battery life. And there really is a little bit of a trade-off. I mean, the slice batteries, it's a different battery technology, it's yeah. a different cost to drive it. Um, so it, it may not necessarily be the best fit for all of our notebooks, but where, where it makes sense, we want to you know, roll it out.